Hey what's up guys and welcome to Watch Between the Lines, a show where we get a little bit too dumb and read too much into anime openings. This time we'll be going over the third opening of Diamond No Ace. The OP starts off with Salmuda, who is better than Furia, fight me, I'm at a point in my life where I have nothing to lose, waking up and well seeing as he's still a high schooler fresh in his puberty, he probably has a morning with, which gets further signified by the camera rising in the next shot, you know, it's, it's a metaphor for his thing rising. Next we have a couple people with their backs turned to us, followed by a bunch of guys who look really pissed off at something. And that something is revealed to be a smiling Savamuda. But now you might ask, why is he smiling in the midst of all this? How come this guy can be happy while you can't? I mean, I can help you with the first one in a short bit, but for the second one, I haven't even figured that one out for myself. <clears throat> Moving on. Now after having my weekly small existential crisis comes the title card, yada yada yada. And after the title card we get to see Sawamura running away. From what you ask? I think that he's running away from the dwindling feeling from disappointing others as we can see in the facial expressions on the following clips. We even see him getting a flashback to his childhood getting beat up by his dad with a... A bat? Oh man, that's rough. I mean, my mom was only dual wielding the belt and the chunkler. So I can't tell you how traumatic that must have been, but that's fucked up. No wonder is he running away at this section. But now we finally get to the scenes which bind everything together. We get to see a lonely Sawamura in his room and tying back to the morning wood scene at the beginning, he probably is done touching himself. Next we get to see his face up close and I recognize his face in an instant. It's the face of someone who realizes that he does it to some pretty weird stuff after being done and snapping back to reality. You know, the face you do where you watch at your screen, then your hand and then at your junk in disgust for a few cycles. Only to do it to even weirder stuff next time, am I right? This reveal is huge because it shows us that Sawamura has a really weird and niche fetish and knowing this, a lot of hidden messages become clearer. That scene where Sawamura smiles in the middle while being surrounded by the angry guys? That's him coming to terms with having that kink and not having to run away from people's expectations. After Fepimura is done, we get to see his friends, who still look friendly with him which makes me believe that they still don't know that Sawamura has that weird, maybe even gross kink. But a big problem comes in the next scene where we get to see Furia, the bitch, walking very closely by Sawamura, probably having whispered something into his ear. Combined with Sawamura getting visibly angry here, I can only guess that Sawamura left his laptop open and didn't delete his history. Oh, classical rookie mistake! And Furia saw the thing Sawamura likes doing it too and is now threatening him of spilling the secret. Kind of a bitch move if you ask me, but seeing as Furia is one, he'd probably do it. And like bitchy clockwork, he did. Just look at Narumiya's face. That's the face of a cocky king shamer right there. Furia even hopes that Savamura will lose all of his friends on the team. But we see Miyuki, best man in Act 1, Kazuya just straight up reject Narumiya's and Furia's king shaming way. What follows next is just a collection of kings and likes that the other characters seem to have. We have Solo, because that face doesn't really scream, I get a lot of action. Although he does look like that doctor cop teacher dude. These droplets probably refer to oil, so Narumiya likes the oiled up genre. The next one is super easy, we have fisting, followed by... Um... Uh... Uh... Bukake? Man, it's getting hard to find this shit. Judging by his rough movements and angry face, I'd have to say hardcore. And last but not least, Cherry Boys. Man, I know how that feels, don't worry Nori. We end up with Sawamura realizing that he can be open about his feelings and see him sharing it with Miyuki and Miyuki, like the best man that he is, just accepts him. Finally, they all gather up in the end, which probably indicates the orgy genre. One thing I wanna add, am I the only one who's sad that an orgy between gays isn't called an orgy? Doesn't matter. Wait, I'm just now realizing that I'm talking about sex between high schoolers. How old are these guys? Oh, oh. Thank you guys so much for watching, I hope you enjoyed this weird humor of mine. I'll try to do the series every month and in between have maybe other videos. All that's left for me to say is for you to do whatever you want down there. This was Knife, and I'm out. Ciao!